You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Balls. What's up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome back to another new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, Ryan LaFleur Jr. As always, guys, I'm bringing you all your uh, what's happened in the last few weeks of the NASCAR Diecast News uh, with your with the following, of course, uh, the big old three, like we always like to say. <laughs> we got the newly released Diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales. We got, you know, three new 164s to be talking about and one 124 exclusive. And we got ourselves uh, to go along with that. We got the pre-orders as well. Lots of cool looking pre-orders to be talking about, especially with what just happened at Kentucky, Chicagoland, Sonoma, and everything in between, guys. And lots of cool other paint schemes as well to be talking about, including some daunted throwbacks as well. One in particular might be this guy right here, that I'm looking at behind me <laughs> and with all the pre-orders that we got as well we got 10 new cancellations as well and um, this might cause a firestorm because let's just say the hype for 164 trucks might be over um, and it might be in danger zone because of what we're gonna see on the cancellations so uh, oopsie might have been a spoiler right there but that's all I got to say right there as we're gonna kick off this new episode of the NASCAR ICAST news with the following and it is going to be the one and only Q that slideshow. Alrighty guys, welcome to the Diecast News. This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and let's go to get things started with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales and Lionel Racing. And remember you can also get these diecasts at your local diecast dealers as well because helping out small businesses, that's always a great thing to do. So let's go and get things started, guys. And we got three new 164 to be talking about. As well, always, we go in numeric order just to keep things flowing and going. And the first one up, it is Denny Hamlin's 2019 number 11 FedEx Express Toyota Camry for Joe Gibbs Racing. So this is the same exact paint scheme that we all know and love from last year. But of course, um, this is probably the car I would recommend skipping out on because we are already going to be getting his Daytona 500 win coming out very soon, guys. We should be in that around around possibly late summer or early fall um, we'll probably be looking at the shipping reports uh, requested by uh, and also supplied by our good friends at Lionel Racing and the Diecast fans on Twitter make sure to check them out if you guys haven't followed already because they are a great source for uh, another great source for Diecast news as well when we're not around so yeah guys but uh, the Danny Hamlet FedEx Express car guys I mean we've um, it's about I mean the gold series was very late on this and it's one of the first Toyotas that have came out along with the other one about to show you in this wave of diecast but um you know sure the hand plans are gonna like this but i say skip out on this one 
but um, this will actually uh, be the only FedEx card that will be released. Um, as you guys know, we uh, all of his other FedEx cars have got canceled. Uh, the Fright, Ground, and and the Office cars have been canceled, which you know it's they're basically the exact same cars. So we're just thankful that we just got one. But um, lots of other cool looking uh, Denny Hamlin stuff that will be coming out very soon. But uh, tune in on the pre-orders, guys. We got a Hamlin car to be talking about um, momentarily. Next up, this one, I'm sure it's going to be a pretty hot seller, and I'm, I definitely am a big fan of this uh, paint scheme as well. It's very American, or America, especially after uh, releasing this right after 4th of July, and, th and today's, uh, uh, and um, yeah, that's really cool, guys. We got Ryan Priest's number 47 Kroger Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for JT Daughtry Racing. So, like I just said, this paint scheme is just, it's bay. It is bait. <laughs> Sorry if that sounds so cringy, but it is, man. I mean, I'm really looking forward to get this car. I might wait until I get this car at Walkers Glen because I am planning to go to the NASCAR Cup race. And, uh, yeah. And that will be a special announcement coming out very soon on more details on that. Um, with my other schedules for the summer. But, yeah. I mean, this paint scheme is just beautiful. I love it. The red, white, and blue just looks fantastic. And like I just said, it is a very America nice car. And the last car to be talking about, so we got uh, Dean Burrito, guys. It is Matt DiBenedetto's number 95 Procore Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Now, I mean, this paint team, it is different. It's a lot more different compared to what, than what we had uh, with last year's car. Um, do I like the yellow numbers on this? No. I think the yellow numbers do look very tacky. I mean, unless the paint scheme does change up. I mean, I know last year we had yellow number 95 numbers with the uh, WRL car, but... Um, this, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of growing on to me, but I don't know, I think it would have been better if it had, like, orange or, um, I almost said yellow numbers, but it already does, Brian, Durr. um, just, I don't know, I mean, yellow does look kind of odd, I mean, unless they incorporated more yellow or something that matches good with yellow in the paint team, it would have worked out well, I mean, some people are gonna like it, and don't get me wrong, I mean, it's not a terrible looking car, but I think just... I don't know, I think that, uh, and the paint scheme does look alright, I mean, it's a little bit on the sloppy side, um, especially towards the hood where that orange is, all, where that orange is up on the top of the, uh, on, on, on top of where the window meets, so, I don't know, I mean, uh, like I said, it's a different paint scheme, and I'm sure many Tibetan Nevo fans are going to get it, so, um, you know, if it comes out in NASCAR Authentics, I'll get it, but if not, I'll probably pass on it. But that wraps up with the 160 board, guys, and that was pretty short, uh, but don't worry, we got more great con content to be talking about. As we're going to get on to the 124 exclusives, and uh, there's a lot of cool 124s that just got released as well. Um, but usually in the 124s, we just talk about the exclusive cars that have coming out only in the 124 scale. That's what I mean by exclusive. And this one was one of the most hyped up uh, cars uh, that a lot of people were waiting for this driver, along with this Homestead uh, Championship win. It is Joey Logano's number 22, Shell Pennzoil Ford Fusion, that he won at the Martinsville race, guys. You know, he pulled off that nice... Uh, bump that nice bump and run with um the former um champion in 2017 martin truex jr so you know two champions going at it <laughs> well before logano was a champion but this was the race that uh, uh basically helped uh, logano uh, clinch his shot to win and compete in the final round at the uh homestead finale guys so really cool and uh this race version guys i mean i know the uh, the driver's side uh doesn't really look like it has that much to it but on the other side guys i mean besides that corner panel that corner panel does look pretty nice so with all that residue on it but on the uh, the pasture side guys man i can see why people got excited over this race win guys that thing is just uh whew, it is nice and this comes from a guy who's not the biggest Logano's fan but i will say this um race version probably one of the best that Logano's ever had guys plus i also love the worn out tires as well with the red um rims i mean just uh, overall really nice looking car and um that nbc logo doesn't look too bad on this paint scheme um since it doesn't protrude out as much as uh, the white backgrounds um, were gone in this race. So, yeah, th this is a car I would recommend getting, especially if you guys, I mean, if you're a Logano fan and you don't get this car, I mean, can you even consider yourself a Logano fan? This is one of his favorite wins, guys, especially uh, the Logano fans that don't like Truex. I mean, oh boy, they love this car. <laughs> but, um, yeah, guys, this is going to be a big hot seller, and we'll be looking at more Logano diecast very soon in the future with his Homestead win and his championship cars coming out as well. Um, so, yeah, guys, and now uh, that wraps up on the diecast releases, guys. So, hope you guys uh, all go and do your diecast shopping, guys, at your local diecast dealers or at plainbsales.com. As now we get on to the pre-orders, guys, we got... 
uh, 15 pre-orders to be talking about, and lots of them are uh, going to be really interesting. We got, um, you know, we we got another big three when it comes to the pre-orders. We got a lot of cool race versions. We got some more patriotic schemes, and we even got some throwbacks, guys. Uh, throwback season is almost here. We got like uh, we're less than one month away for throwback season as patriotic season just wrapped up. But um, yeah, let's go and get things started, guys, in numeric order, and uh, pretty appropriate to have this as uh, the 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 first. Uh, um, creator I'm about to show you guys is our most recent winner in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series and it is the Monster Energy car of Kurt Busch and number one Monster Energy Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. He just drove this car out in style and beated his younger brother Kyle Busch at the Kentucky uh, Speedway guys which you know this was probably uh I will say that the race wasn't that good but the finish man that finish those last three laps Whew, I need a breather. I mean, um, some people are saying it was a really great race, but I don't know. I had some mixed feelings about it. Um, not just saying that because Truex uh, absolutely did bonkers this race. But um, it was different. It was a really different race. Still wasn't that entertaining, but um, that finish, man, just... Um, Man, that was awesome and pretty appropriate to finally see Kurt Busch back in victory lane. And how about Ganassi Racing back in victory lane, guys? That is flat out awesome. I mean, um, I know Elijah Burke is going absolutely nuts right now seeing this car in victory lane. So shout out to Elijah Burke as well. I mean, decided to give an appropriate shout out to, um, you know, the, the Ganassi guy himself. And also my good friend Ganassi, uh, Gan also my good friend Derek as well. He's also a big Ganassi fan as well. So yes sir <laughs> but um that's available for pre-order in both 124 scales next up we got regan smith's number eight uh fire alarms uh, services xfinity car yes regan smith is back in junior motorsports guys if you guys remember him driving that iconic number seven car that now just algar drives um he's back guys and he's gonna be running two races in this car which are gonna be the um the, the, the two road course races before the playoffs mid ohio and road america so gonna be really exciting to see how cool looking this car is and hopefully it'll make it on the pre-order list guys because fire alarm services hasn't really got that much uh uh pre-orders in with their die cast unless 2014 but like what we had several fire alarm services card that got released when Riggy smith drove but after that guys i mean it's not been that good with this sponsor especially with john hernie check but we'll see how it goes guys as that's available for pre-order uh to kick off more about the kentucky uh stuff that just happened we gotta talk about chase Elliott's number nine mountain dew do united states car and um yeah this is a nice um this is basically the mount dew scheme but um it's a lot it's uh, a lot more different and a lot more is going on some people are gonna say it's the best looking paint scheme some people are gonna say it's atrocious you know i gotta say it's meh it's okay but um, that's available for pre-order that he drove at Kentucky. Uh, some more Chase Elliott diecast that we got as well in this episode. We got his uh, his Napa Patriotic Car, guys. So it uh, turns out uh, <laughs> uh, the Napa was pretty late to the party. And we did got a Patriotic Car that will be on the pre-order list now. And um, this paint scheme looks a lot more similar to what he drove um, at, at what he drove a few years ago when he drove the 24 car and also the 9 car in the Xfinity series or what was known as the Nationwide series when he was in there. So, um, yeah, I mean, some people are going to like that. Some people say it's a repetitive paint scheme that he's drove previously, but, you know, he is in a different uh, car number. Well, he's back in the 9 car, so if you have the uh, patriotic Xfinity car from that year, then this will be a great addition to go along with that. But um, it's got to make it on the pre order list, guys, so pre order what you can. Next up, we got two new Dawn's throwbacks to be talked about, and the first one up uh, was uh, announced when uh, they were at Sonoma, and I, I kind of kind of had a big oof. I thought he was going to drive this car at Sonoma, but no, it's going to be his Dawn's throwback for the Donington race, and it is uh, Danny Hamlin's number 11 FedEx Racing, so really different to have FedEx Racing on that a car. Um, second year row, we have a FedEx throwback as well. And hopefully this car will be made since last year's got canceled. But it is a uh, throwback to uh, good old DW, guys. Pretty appropriate after DW just signed off for broadcasting this year. And um, this is going to represent his 1992 Western Auto Car. Also his uh, final win in NASCAR as well. So pretty appropriate. And, um, you know, I'm excited about this car, especially since they got the right colors on that. And we don't have to talk about that Ricky Stiles Jr. car that, um, you know, completely butchered the colors on the original car. So, yeah. This is the more accurate version car, so get on the pre-order list, guys. Now the next one, I know a lot of people are gonna, a, a, a lot of people are gonna share my thoughts and opinions because you guys know me. I'm the Ryan Blaney and Mark Strick Jr. fan, so I gotta talk about his number 12 Pennzoil throwback that was released, and um, pretty appropriate that he's doing a throwback to that iconic number 30 car driven by Michael Waltrip in 1994 for Bahari Racing, um, if I pronounce that right. So yeah, this is um. 
I think this was expected. I mean, uh, I didn't think Ryan Blaney was going to have a throwback like this. It's considering that Pennzoil has been a main sponsor for Joey Logano. Ryan Blaney's kind of had main sponsors with it a few times. Well, I'm guessing Pennzoil really loves them since, you know, both their drivers have been in victory lane with that scheme. So I guess it's kind of like a, a, you know, an even situation. But, um, you know, but a lot of people are wondering now, what's Logano's throwbacks going to be? And I'm hoping we get some surprises. This one was definitely a big surprise because, like I said, I, I thought Logano was going to get this a throwback. But, nope, um, Ryan Blaney did. And you know what, guys? I'm really looking forward to that. This is the second year in a row that I'm loving the Ryan Blaney throwback. I absolutely loved um, the last year's car. I, I got it. I got this car, like, what, like, in 124 Elites and the 164 scale. Um, heck, might even get an ARC scale if I have to because, man, I love that paint scheme. And this one is no exception. Um, beautiful, beautiful car. I'm hoping Lino doesn't butcher the color on this car because they do. Oh, boy. <laughs> Someone's going to get some threat death threats in that in that Lino racing office. Am I right? <laughs> Probably me and Bushwhacker Reviews will take turns beating the crap out of uh, Howard Hitchcock. <laughs> uh, note to self, OBB and uh, Bushwhacker Reviews does not promote violence. We're just in it for the jokes. But yes, guys. Um, boy, things just turned dark really quickly. So back to some happy thoughts, guys. We got to talk about the Watermelon Man, Ross Chastain, and his number 16 Ellsworth Advisors Daytona Xfinity win. The first ever win for Colleen Racing. And how about Colleen Racing getting one, two, three... Oh, wait a minute. Something happened to AJ Allmendinger, so that was kind of too good to be true. <laughs> um, apparently, AJ Allmendinger got DQ'd, apparently. So, But, man, Ross Chastain, man, he's had a lot of ups and downs this season, but right here, this made up for it. And, my God, guys, I mean, if he's going to be running for the trucks points next year, watch out for this guy, man, if he decides to run for uh, Xfinity points for next year. I mean, this guy, he's going to get a good cup ride soon, guys, and... Seeing him win in the Xfinity race is no exception. I mean, that was a pretty great win. I know my good friend, uh, Mr. Derek Lewis, he actually saw this car in victory lane. So, uh, <laughs> um, hopefully he brought some watermelon back for home, am I right? But, um, yeah, this car is available for pre-order and um, looking forward to see if this car will make it on MOQ. Next up, we got an Earnhardt iCast to be talking about. And it's not Junior, it is Jeffrey Earnhardt's number uh, 18 IK9 Patriotic. Xfinity Toyota Supra that he recently drove at the Charlotte Xfinity race. So this is a very America looking car as well along with the Ryan Priest car. So you know I really do like this. Um, this is a, um, a commemorative paint scheme to one of the IK9 officers in uh, Mooresville, uh, in Mooresville, North Carolina. So that is really cool that they did that. And um, heck, I always that's one thing I applaud with NASCAR. NASCAR is very patriotic, and that's you know this paint scheme definitely represents that pretty well. So really cool. Um, that's the for pre-order in both scales. Next up, uh, Martrex Jr. got it done and got his third Snowman win in a row, guys. So we got to talk about his Bass Pro Shops Toyota Camry, guys. This is available for pre-order and only um, the 124 scales. I mean. Like I said, guys, I mean, it's pretty amazing that Martrex Jr., I mean, he's won, but he's won all the road courses but the Roval, guys. I mean, there was that one time he almost got it, but, you know, Sonoma, I, I was, um, this is actually the first time I predicted Truex winning uh, a race, and I was like, oh, watch Truex win it, and he did. So, yeah, Truex was pretty dominant, and I, it, it was a pretty close race. I mean, Kyle Busch was closing in, but luckily, uh, it was uh, not close enough, guys, and Truex got it done, and... Right now, guys, this summer has been the Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. show. <laughs> but now everything has just got uh, very interesting now with Justin Haley and Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman winning. So, um, yeah, feel free to comment below what you guys think of this uh, this uh, second half of the season already. I mean, I think it's already looking great so far considering Truex and Busch uh, haven't won the last three races. But, yeah, guys, looking forward to get this car since I am the Truex fan and uh, we can move on from there. Next up, this car, I will be dead-ass shocked if this car gets canceled because this is, let's just say, Exalta and the Flame paint schemes. My God, they never disappoint. And this one right here is no exception. We got the Flames of Independence car that he drove for Daytona, which, you know, is a pretty controversial car, especially if you guys saw what happened with him and in a the practice session with him and Brad Kozlowski. So that's what this car is going to be mostly known for now, sadly. Um, but on a brighter note, guys, this paint scheme is just beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, it's basically the Exalta car, but they inverted the colors. And we got, you know, a white, um, 
base background with the blue flames on the front and the red flames on the back. I mean, very creative paint scheme and the iconic yellow 24. This gave me a hot seller for sure, guys. So I'm sure this car is going to make an MOQ. I'm sure you guys are loving it too. Next up, we got another Don's throwback to be talking about, and it is uh, the good old beard man, uh, Corey LaJoy, in the number 32 Keen Parts Don's throwback. Now, if you guys remember the Nestle Crunch car that Dale Jarrett drove in 1990, then um, this is the car that he's doing a throwback to. So um, Corey LaJoy, once again, added with the with the candy throwbacks, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess Kyle Busch has got some competition now for the candy man now, am I right? <laughs> just kidding, man. I think that's just a uh, coincidence that he did a Baby Ruth, uh, Jeff Gordon throwback for Xfinity, and now he's doing a Crunch throwback for Dale Jared. So, um, Corey LaJoy, man, he's got some really cool looking uh, die casts that will hopefully get made. But, man, I just wish uh, the Old Spice had, uh, uh, I wish we got that Old Spice uh, face car, guys. That, that, oh my god, that, that would be the most meanest review ever. But this will be a good close second along with this Baby Ruth car. But, Looking forward to this one, man. Hopefully, it will make it on MOQ, um, unlike the Baby Ruth car that got canceled. But next up, we got uh, this one right here. It was pretty surprising, but um, this might be redemption for uh, the U.S. Air Force car, the original team that got canceled in all scales. But this is Bubba Wallace's number 43 U.S. Air Force A-10 Warthog car that he drove at Daytona. And my God, guys, I'm hoping this car makes it in the 164 scale because... If you guys already have the Connor Daly Indy car from this year that he drove in the Indy 500, could you just imagine having this die cast to go along with that? I mean, that would be great. I think that's the main reason why they did that because they saw the Indy car matching. I don't know why they didn't do it last year, but really glad that they matched it up with the Indy car from this year. And plus, if you're a big fan of the A10 Warthog, I mean, especially if you're a big uh, military guy like myself, this car. It's definitely going to be a big hot seller. I, I will be, of course, dead-ass shocked if this car gets canceled. But who knows, guys? The pre-orders have, uh, the cancellations have been quite surprising for this year. And they've hit an all-time low. So, but, you know, you got to pre-order, guys, because that's how the system works. We got three new more, uh, three new more um, pre-orders to talk about. And then we're going to get on to the uh, interesting turning point of this episode, which are the cancellations. Again, we got to talk about uh, this man right here, Ross Chastain. Uh, he got it done and got his... Uh, supposedly his third truck win not really but it, it is um, he uh, he won in the number 45 car shield gateway truck uh, uh, Chevrolet Camaro so I mean not Chevrolet Camaro Chevrolet Silverado whoopsie well there's a whoopsie daisy moment right there so feel free to comment below that right there in this video as there's always something for OBB to say uh, silly in a, vid in a video so that was one right there <laughs> man I never knew trucks drove Chevrolet Camaros hmm but uh, anyways, I just had to bust myself right there. Another nice looking uh, truck that we got going on right here. Like I said, Ross Chastain, man, he's just pulling up those wins. Hopefully it won't get canceled. I mean, uh, I believe this is offered in both scales, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, this is uh, this uh, hopefully will be some redemption. I like his Kansas win truck that got canceled in 1C4 scale. But um, yeah, nice looking paint scheme. I do like this, uh, especially with the new sponsored car shield. So really cool. Next up, this... Uh, Cars only gonna be available in the 124 scale, but you know, Lionel might throw some curveballs and put this in, in in NASCAR Authentics. Justin Haley, man, wow, he won the Daytona race. Wow, for Sp Spire Motorsports. Spire Motorsports, man, they they have more wins than Stuart Haas Racing. Wow, I mean, I'm really shocked right now. <laughs> they have more wins than the seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson. Wow. Spire Motorsports, man. I mean, I know um, a lot of people question them that they were in for the money, especially when they hired Quinn Hoff and um, Justin Haley. But this paint scheme, man, I love this paint scheme. Um, this will go great, hopefully, along with this Gateway Wind truck that got released as well. And also his Fraternal Order of Eagles uh, black truck that got uh, released last year as well. So um, if you guys like the matching paint schemes, this one is a great exception. And this is a million dollar question of the day. Will this die cast come with the rain cover? Well, who knows? I highly doubt it since Lionel's never made rain covers before. I mean, they made elite covers before uh, back uh, when their first year uh, making NASCAR die cast in 2011. But... I highly doubt it, but, you know, Lionel would like to throw in surprises, or maybe we'll get some custom makers that will make this. And plus, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, this is full, kind of false advertising this show right here. I mean, you could take a look at this pre-order picture. We do see a rain cover, so, you know, Lionel, you got to make the cars accurate. Otherwise, you can't stick up to your award. Oh, who am I kidding? Lionel's never stick up to the award since uh, Howard Hitchcock came along. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, this could be a cool-looking car to be talking about, and hopefully it won't get canned. And the last car to be talking about, uh, to, to go along with another first-time winner, the showman, man. He finally got the W, guys. Alex Bowman in number 88, Chicagoland Race to Win Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for Hendrick Motorsports. Besides Chase Elliott, we finally have Hendrick Motorsports in victory lane, guys. And more importantly, the 88 is finally back in victory lane since the 2015 Phoenix Rain Race. My God, that's a great feeling, guys, right there. Really, I mean, Bowman has really turned around this season very well, and uh, we've seen it, guys. I mean, we saw he, how close he was to uh, win many races. And I tell you what, when Larson passed him on those last few laps, I thought it was over. But Bowman definitely showed he was the showman indeed, guys. He drove his rear off, and I know it sucked for the Larson fans, since the Larson fans are absolutely having nightmares over these last few seasons he's had. Um, this, uh, this one was definitely an exception right here, but... Man, what a great race this was. I mean, Chicagoland, man, it's starting to become a pretty favorite uh, favorite race now, considering that it wasn't so popular before. But after two great finishes in a row, I say this race track is starting to live up to its expectations. Well, you know, this track was basically built for indie cars, but, you know, that's uh, all I got to say right there. Oh, boy. Trigger alert. <laughs> but that wraps up on the pre-orders, guys. And now it's time for the turning point of this episode, and it is dun 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 the cancellations as i'm not a great uh, sound effector right there um i'm too cheap for sound effects so <laughs> that's the best bet we got right there um i need funding for sound effects uh, <laughs> hashtag help obb for sound effects 2019 <laughs> but uh we got new on uh, on the serious side guys we got 10 new cancellations to be talking about and there are going to be four and many of these are going to be very detrimental for the 160 port collector guys there's only i believe um I believe there's only about like seven, I believe, that are only 164 scales that were canceled. But the rest, guys, I mean, like I said, if you're a big 164 collector, I might as well go ahead and turn off the video because this is going to be disastrous right here. So, uh, hope you guys got the tissues and all the uh, cleanup aisles and all the cleanup essentials they got with you because this is going to be quite messy. So, let's go get things started. The first one up is Ryan Newman's number six, Oscar Mayer, Throwback. This has been canceled in all scales. I'm not surprised. This throwback was pretty disappointing. This was supposed to be a Mark Mar Mark Martin throwback um, to his uh, iconic number Vaveline, his number six Vaveline Four Thunderbird that he drove in the uh, late 1980s and the early 1990s. Um, I mean, paint team layout is really it's definitely on point, but the color the colors are not right, and I think that turned off a lot of people. That's why I'm thinking why this car got canceled in every single scale. Oh boy, here we go, guys. Unfortunately, the hype for 164 trucks are officially over. And you know what, guys? I might, I'm going to go out of the limp here, and now I'm going to show you guys these next four I'm about to show you guys as I'm going out of New York order because I just want to go ahead and get this out of the way. Let's just say this is going to be a bad year for Thor Sport uh, Racing. You guys already know that the Ben Rhodes uh, truck that got can the Ben Rhodes Carolina nut truck got canceled in both scales from a few episodes ago. But now I have to say that all of his other teammates, every single teammate for uh, for this team has been canceled in the 164 scale. Well, here we go. We got Johnny Sauter's number 13 Tenda Heel truck. It's been canceled in 164 scale. <sighs> We got Mike Snyder's number 27 Louisiana hot sauce truck, also canceled in 164 scale. Ah, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Jesus. Ah, oh, this one hurts. Mac, next up, we got Mac Crafton's number 88's Menard truck 164. Oh my god, Lionel, make it stop! Oh, oh my god, no! Oh man, is there any more hope? No, there isn't. The last one of the trucks to be talking about. Is Grant and Figures number 98 champion truck? Well, might as well throw uh, Thor Sport Racing and the rest of all their diecasts under the bus because it's over. We're not getting any 164 trucks released for Thor Sport Racing. Case closed. Unbelievable. I am just, I am, I don't know what to say right now. I can sit here and complain and moan, and you know, there's gonna be these people out there and be like, oh, you got a pre order. 
The thing I don't get, usually when uh, when a diecast gets released on the pre-ordered list, you usually got about like two or three weeks, and after that, they show you the results. These freaking trucks have been on the pre-order list since freaking March. And now, three months later, Lionel decides, oh, it's time to cancel them now. We don't have enough MOQs. Are you freaking kidding me? I thought these cars made it on the uh, they made it MOQ. Because that's usually how it goes. You get a pre-order, and you wait two weeks, and then after that, we see if the diecast get canceled or not. Usually, it's like two to four weeks at the most. My god. Ah, this is just disappointing. And this goes along with the next car I'm about to show you guys, which is Harrison Burton's number 20 Dex Imaging Daytona Arca Win. This has been canceled in the 124 ARC, which is the only scale they've been offered. Again, just like the trucks, this car was offered way back in March. Why did they took this long to finally cancel it? It got our hopes up for nothing. We thought we were going to get um, the Harrison Burton truck. I mean, not Her the Harrison Burton truck, but we thought we were going to get this Harrison, Harrison Burton car. And more importantly, we thought we were going to get 164 trucks for Door Sport. But I guess not. I mean, I guess not, guys. I don't know. Like I said, I can I could just mope and complain. But, you know, that's what the comment section is for. So go ahead. Send your thoughts and opinions about that. Because um, I don't know if I want to do the rest of these cancellations. Because I'm just really pissed off right now. I mean, I usually just fly over these cancellations. But... I'm really salty about the all, all of these freaking trucks got canceled. Every single freaking truck got canceled. What the hell is going on? There was demand with the 164 trucks, and now we don't have. Now there's not demand anymore. Okay, something's not right with this freaking pre list. And Lionel, and and especially you, you freaking Howard Hitchcock. I swear to God, you guys need a better freaking pre system. This is utter bullshit. I apologize for the language, but. I've had enough of these cancellations with the 164s. We are at an all-time high for 164 cancellations. All-time high. We're not going to get any new diecast coming out for quite a while because of this crap. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. And feel free to post your comments and thoughts about what you guys had to say that, as I just had to do a nice little mini rant review on, on what just happened. As now, I'm just going to, you know, calm down, take a sip of water, and uh, breathe a little bit. And let's get on to the rest of these cancellations, as hopefully my blood pressure is still on the okay side. Oh, my hands are shaking. That's not good. <laughs> Next up, we got Michael McDowell's number 34, Loves Travel Stops Patriotic Car. Again, like the 164 trucks. <sighs> this has been canceled in 164 scale only. So, I love the camouflage car, so this one is a big disappointment, to say the least. The next up is his teammate, Matt Tift. This one does surprise me since his speed cool car did got canceled as well. It's his Tunity Sunscreen Surface car. It's been canceled at every single scale. Underrated car. That's all I can say. I mean, Matt Tift's a pretty underrated driver and it's a pretty underrated car. Sorry to say, but you know, that's not a surprise right there. This next one I thought was going to be a big surprise. And um, Larson fans, oh man, you are not going to like me for this one. I mean, I don't make the cancellations. I just report on them. But Kyle Larson's number 42 Clover car that he infamously uh, that he unfortunately got into a serious bad wreck at, at Talladega has been canceled in the 164 ARC scale only. Man, this Clover car, man, he has so much bad luck with this car. I mean, with what happened at Talladega and then crashing this car at the Roll War race last year, probably kind of a weird coincidence that this car got canceled as well. So Lionel's got some crypt, uh, some cryptic messages going on with these cancellations as I'm trying to see. But um, I'm just joking, man. But um, yeah, this paint scheme, pretty disappointing. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, uh, would have been a great uh, addition to go along. I mean, I believe we did get the Clover car from last year, so probably not a big surprise. But I know it's going to suck for uh, the Larson fans out there because, you know, when a Larson car is canceled or a Chase Elliott car gets canceled, um, you're going to have a better time. And the last car to be talked about on this episode of the cancellations, and Bob wrap up this episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, it's another patriotic car. And this one, I'm really disappointed about, considering this is the last patriotic car that we are getting for this sponsor since they are leaving next year. It's Alex Bowman's number 88 to Nationwide Patriotic Car. Again, like all the other cars I just mentioned, this has only been canceled in the 164 ARC scale. My God, that's disappointing. I'm a big fan of this paint scheme, and the bright uh, blue and shiny metallic blue looks really nice on this. But unfortunately... It did not make the MOQ list, guys. I mean, just, my God. I don't know what to say anymore. 
Huh. I mean, I, I, I mean, it, this is not as bad as the truck 164s, but God, don't get me started on those again. I already gave you guys a headache with the rants, <laughs> but I'm hoping you got, I, but as I'm proud to say that has wrapped up the cancellations and this has also wrapped up this, um, interesting episode of the NASCAR diecast news. My God, my soul is like dead now after doing those cancellations. Wow. Huh. I need a minute. Just, I need a minute guys. Just bear with me. Whew. My God. But um, hope you guys uh, all uh, just uh, my I, I'm just out of breath right now, guys. I mean, just uh, is there any hope for 164 trucks, guys? Maybe NASCAR Authentics will save the day. Who knows? But I don't know, guys. It's just amazing that you know this year we had you know so much hype going into 164s, and most of them have been canceled. The Brett Moffat trucks, all the door sport trucks. Who's next? KBM? Who knows? The Rosh Hashanah truck got canceled as well. I mean, there's no hope with the Gandor Door Truck Series diecast. There just isn't. And not unless Lionel gets their act together with this pre-ordering system. But whatever, guys. But this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Diecast News. All we want is to hear guys' thoughts and opinions down below. Until next time, this is OBB. And yeah, I will catch you guys hopefully on another more positive Diecast News episode.